Hello, and welcome back to the Waban Podcast, the movie and TV show podcast where an expert on the subject discusses things with the average uh, viewer. Um, I'm your host, Nim, and I am joined here by a therapy horse. <sighs> now, what are you coming to me for today? Um... Well, I'm an alcoholic, so, you know, I need, need your help with that. Mm-hmm. Now, why do you think that is? I don't know. My parents were bad, I guess. <laughs> your parents were bad. Yeah, it made me drink, uh, you know. Yeah. It happens. It happens <laughs> to the best of us. All right. How detailed. How <laughs> detailed, yeah. I mean, what more do you need? I don't know. Got addicted to alcohol. That's just what happens. Um, anyways, so <clears throat> this a week. That's terrible way to view it, but all right. That's a great way to start the podcast episode, you know, just great. Um, so anyways, uh, that was clearly a reference to what we're talking about today, which is the first half of the final season of BoJack Horseman. So the first eight episodes, uh, because it's a 16-episode season, and we did not want to talk about 16 episodes in one episode of the podcast, because that would be a lot. Um, before we get started, though, I just want to say that this is episode 26 of the podcast, which means officially, you know, that's one episode every week, so that's already half of a year. 26 is half of 52, so. Woo! Made it half a year. Um... So yeah, that's that's the longest podcast I've ever done. So only podcast I've ever done. Only, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, here's for twenty six more. We'll get to a year. Um, all right. Anyways, we can get into this. So the first half, um, which the season was when it originally came out, kind of split up in halves because it, you know half of it came out and then months later the other half came out, which. Uh, By the way, the first half ends with enough of a cliffhanger that it was annoying to wait for the other half. I was like, what the hell? (laughs) Uh, But, you know, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So uh, first half of the season, what are are your overall thoughts? It's a lot less depressing than other seasons. Like, you can tell it's, like, wrapping up, you know. Oh, yeah. Jack's getting closure on some level. He's improving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's one of the main themes of this this season is sort of just I mean at least the first half anyways. The first half is Bojack finally making those final steps to sort of fully becoming better. Um him choosing to go to rehab was probably the best decision he ever made, you know, that's what mm-hmm. really made him start to, you know, first off sober up and second off just look at life in a different way and and you get a lot of which I think <clears throat> I think this is interesting is you get a lot of uh, the idea in here that that Bojack never took the steps to get better because he always felt like he didn't deserve it or like he couldn't be better or like, you know, um, and then here there's like lines in here where he says like uh, closer to the end of the first half, I think, but or wherever it is where he says things like, you know. I wish I had done this years ago, you know? Um, and right. he says like, I always had this, you know, weird notion in my head that I was like broken and that nothing could fix me. Um, which is partially instilled in him from his mother. Cause if you remember back in season two, his mother mm-hmm. has that line where she tells him, you know, Oh, you were born broken. You know, you're Bojack Horseman. There's no fixing that, you know? So like it's sort of this thing instilled in his brain from his parents even. So it's it's interesting that like he's carried that all these years and and you know, it takes him finally deciding to go to rehab and actually talk to a therapist and all this, you know, go through all these therapies and stuff to actually yeah. come to terms with that. To actually try to be fixed. Right. And right. then it happens. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Gradually yeah. at least. Yeah, exactly. So um, the first episode is titled A Horse Walks Into a Rehab. Mm. So um, 
obviously this is, you know, the episode it's about, it means Bojack is going to rehab. A horse walks into a rehab, uh-huh. but it's also a play on the, you know, horse walks into a bar, you know, the classic right, joke. Right. Um, the bartender says, why the long face? Ha ha ha. You know, you know, all that good stuff. Um, anyways, so he goes into, so this episode sort of just recaps him in rehab. And I think this is where he's, um, writing letters to Diane, right? Is this the one or is that later episode? Um, no, I, well, maybe you wrote one or two this episode as well, but I mainly remember the letters to her being on a, like a story from her perspective and her. And oh like yeah, I know it was, right? it was, that's like the next one of the next or like the third episode maybe. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Right. So that's not in this episode. Okay. So yeah, it's just, showing him going through rehab. I don't think, and there's not, uh, you don't get the stories with the other characters yet. Uh, mm-hmm. in this, there is one moment in the episode where Bojack calls, this is actually kind of a fun moment. So he calls Diane <clears throat> to get help on trying to track down where the one, the girl lives that like escaped rehab. Um, oh, right, right. And you know, Diane, you know, you know, then he tries to get to Todd so that then everybody ends up on this call, literally all the main characters. Mm-hmm. So it's Todd, Princess Carolyn, Mr. Peanut Butter, Bojack and Diane, who are the main characters of the show. They're the the continuing like main characters of the show. So it was kind of like a nice moment of like reconnecting all the main characters all in one little scene of like. But they don't even talk or all that much. Yeah, just it's. it's just, it, I think it was a fun way to introduce all the characters at once, just just like at the beginning of the season, kind of. Um, so that was kind of a fun moment. Um, but and like <laughs> when everybody else is talking, Diane starts to like fall asleep on the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Anyways, I we've never mentioned this before, but Princess Carolyn's like really doing tongue twisters and i'm pretty sure that moment in that phone call was like the longest one ever yeah oh yeah it was like this big setup with mr peanut butter and all that and then yeah she like recaps it and it's like yeah it's like yeah i know i love princess carolyn's tongue twisters they're always like (laughs) they're always fun like she would be a good rapper like if you're, I, th- I feel like if you're really good at tongue twisters, then you're you might be good at rapping, you know, like fast rapping, you know, because it's I mean, a lot of, because when you rap, it's a lot of it's like words that sound similar and words that like start the same, you know, like you try to like have all these rhyme schemes and like rhythm and stuff, um, and you but doing it fast and it, also pronouncing every word perfectly, right. <laughs> you know. So like, I, mean, I feel it'd like probably help at least. You yeah. could translate it right. You just got to do it to a beat. And like add some some add a flow to it, add a, add a rhythm and stuff to it, and then you're you're good to go, you know. Um, but yeah, which uh, so anyway, so this episode, so most of it is just Bojack going through rehab, and then dealing with the whole thing with uh, Jameson, the one girl who's in rehab, who's a teenager, right. she's like sixteen. Um, and her supposed younger baby sister, you know, um, who you find out is her actual daughter. Um, and, and I think this is an important moment for Bojack. He start, so he's trying to like help her. And then at the end, he realizes that she's the mother of this child in, in Bojack. This is like sort of a moment for Bojack to kind of just be like, like see sort of the negative side of like alcoholism and stuff like that. Like, she wasn't even able to take care of her own baby. Her parents had to, and like she has to go to rehab constantly, like all this mm-hmm. kind of issues. And it's, so maybe it's an outside perspective of the brand yeah. of thing that he's been dealing with. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I, I kind of like that. And, and then there's also like a montage in here too, which is kind of cool. Like closer to the beginning where it's like showing Bojack when he first goes to rehab, he's like, doing right. bad at everything they're doing like exercises and stuff and he's bad at it he's like struggling with everything and he was just laying there like right looking dead right and then but then they go through like a montage and then by the end of it he's like 
doing great at everything show like over the months or, or however long um but um yeah and i i, I think there was one inch really interesting thing that i believe yes it was in this episode was there's these flashbacks of bojack like drinking right Mm-hmm. So there's a flashback of him when he's like on oh right yeah horsing no, around right. and he's offered a drink oh yeah it's like his the person the woman who he's like supposed to have a kiss on screen and he's nervous it's like first season so it's like he's still early on in the show he's still nervous about things and uh, I think it's his his the hair person who cuts his hair uh, Sharona yeah. is it her she offers him a drink to loosen up a little. And he's like, no, I, I, I don't really drink. And then she gives it to him, and then he does it, and then you know helps him loosen up. And you think like, oh, is that like the first time he started drinking? Okay. And then no. later on, there's an even earlier flashback when he's in like at a high school party, and he's pressured to in peer pressured into drinking, and then he goes crazy, and then and then it shows even earlier than that. It's you know later on in the episode when he's younger and he went to like bring food to his father and you know, his father gave him a drink and he drank too much and went crazy. And you think, okay, that has to be like when he first started his spiral of drinking. But then at the very end of the episode is the last one when he's like really young, he walks in and sees his parents passed out on the couch from, you know, drinking too much. And he goes, takes a sip of the drink of, of a drink himself and then goes and lays down on the couch with them. And it's like, I don't know. It's, it's just, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Cause it's like sort of this, it, it, it's like the alcoholism is so deep seated within him because it's something that's always been there his entire life. Mm-hmm. Saw his parents do it and mimicked it and, that happened and it's just kind of spiraled with these little moats added onto it every few years until mm-hmm. now it's just there yep yep Exa- yeah exactly it's yeah um but yeah and then there's another interesting detail that i like in here too which is the so so jameson tries to when she goes back in tries to sneak in a bottle a water bottle full of vodka, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Bojack takes it from her. He's like, you can't have this. But then he keeps it with him. He doesn't drink from it. Well, he almost does, but then he decides not to, which is a good moment for Bojack. Right. But he, he looks... Like, is it this one or is it later that he actually takes a sip and like spits it out? Um, That might be this one, I think. No, like he, no, no, I think, or maybe it's the later one. Yeah, because yeah, there's there's that one later. Him to throw it out the window, and yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, I, I think it's an interesting detail. So he looks into, looks at the bottle, and mm-hmm. they have this visual metaphor where he sees the bottle and he sees like the stars in yeah. the bottle, um, because it's that's a visual reminder of the the planetarium that he went to with Sarah Lynn. Oh, that's what it was doing. Right. So it's it's seeing this vodka and seeing his alcohol is like seeing his alcoholism is like reminding him of the moment, you know, probably one of the worst moments of his addictions, which was when what led to Sarah Lynn's death. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's sort of a big motivating factor for him in a way. Cause he kind of thinks of it as he's like, I can't let anything like this happen again. Um, so that was a big little, like little thing. Cause if you notice, I don't know if you noticed the intro is the, how they changed the intro in this season. I did watch, watch it through once this season. Yeah. So the first episode, they didn't really have the intro. Mm-hmm. The first episode, it just, it started to play, but then it went, it like did this weird fade out from it. Uh, but the rest of the season, they have it and it's, they change. <clears throat> so like, usually the intro is like, it show it's, it's mostly the same, but there's like certain things that are slightly different. Like there's always a section that shows like him going through 
it's like shows him going through his day and it shows it's different depending on the season. So like the first season he's going through his day in like a, a store. The second season he's going through his day. It shows him going through the set of secretariat. The third season it shows him going through like a, a red carpet, you know, kind of setting. Um, mm-hmm. The fourth season, it was like sort of a weird montage of like all the people in his life that he thinks about all the time. So that one was actually interesting too. Uh, and then the fifth season was him going through the set of Filbert. Um, right. And I this, noticed that this season it's past season, like all yeah. the worst moments of the past seasons. Yeah. It's showing him go through all these moments of his past life, but also it opens with the weird starry night. Same, right. same exact, same exact stars that you see from the planetarium. Again, that same me- visual metaphor for, you know, him thinking, cause like that's one of his biggest low moments of his life is the death of Sarah Lynn, you know, mm-hmm. um, which if you think about it, that's actually interesting. Cause that was almost exactly almost halfway through the whole show. Cause it was at the very end of the third season, you know? Um, but yeah, that's like one of the big, yeah. So yeah. So it's the, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. So, um, yeah, I think it's a really good first episode. Um, I mean, cause obviously it makes sense to start with this cause we ended the last season with him being dropped off at, at, uh, rehab. So, you know, start this season with it. <laughs> um, yeah, we can move on to the next one if you'd like. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so the next episode, uh, is mostly a princess Carolyn episode. Um, right. This is the one which where is she has the, like a bunch of after images. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the new client, which is Princess Carolyn learning to deal with being a mother on top of dealing with her career, mm-hmm. which obviously is very, you know, difficult to do. Um, but they use a really cool visual thing to sort of show the stress of it and show the. Um, so like they, act. yeah, yeah. So they have like her going around doing her going around and every time she's like walking around doing stuff in her day, you know, there's like these thing these like, you know, weird versions of herself behind her, like going around doing a bunch of stuff too, mm-hmm. at the same time. After like, images. Yeah. After image images, it's like a, a visual metaphor for like her doing everything at once kind of, um, so that's, yeah. it's really cool. And it's like, it, it creates this constant noise because each one of the images has like a sound to it. Mm-hmm. So you're constantly hearing these noises of like everything happening in the background. So it's like. Yeah, I think the first one was like, one <clears throat> was constantly dropping it, or one was trying to apply the diaper to the baby. One was constantly dropping the old diaper in the trash can and then shaking a rattle and all these other things at the same time. So yeah. just this cut <clears throat> me. Right. Cause some of it's sounds of things she's doing it. Some of it's like sounds of her like sighing and stuff like there's somewhere it's like, mm-hmm. <sighs> and then eventually she mentions Karen Katata and that's at, and added in Karen Katana, 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 <laughs> you know? So it's like this cool kind of visual metaphor, which I really like. Um, <clears throat> and then it sort of, at some point ties in other things in this episode as well. So like you get um, Mr. Peanut Butter visiting Bojack at rehab, um, Mm -hmm. which I don't remember exactly what happens with that. Like what the importance of that was. I think there was, it's hard to remember. That might be, is this one of the ones where they go through all princess Carolyn's, then in the next episode they do that side of it or is it like at the end of this episode no that it's all in the same episode okay well i think it's uh <sighs> right right so mr peanut butter had a conversation with pickles which led to uh like her suggesting to go visit bojack in rehab because she thought she was feeling guilty because he was in rehab and not because Mr. Bean Butter cheated on her. So mm-hmm. Mr. Bean Butter goes to the rehab, That's hangs right. out pretty much, and like 
kind of projects himself onto this one guy in like the meeting. Oh yeah, that that's seems right. to help the guy. And it was all kind yeah, of, that's right. Eventually, he just leaves. I think I don't remember exactly what happens after. Yeah, yeah, it's just a fun time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, yeah, I think there's other little things in the background too. Like there was um, there was Todd. Oh, Todd ends up watching the baby for a minute there too, and like, mm-hmm. which sort of starts the whole thing where Maybe like. Todd. Yeah, yeah. So, or at least hints at it because she doesn't actually officially hire him as her nanny until like a little bit later. Um, but yeah, um, no, this is a really good Princess Caroline episode. Um, I, I, <clears throat> I really like the ending moment. It's it's like a quiet moment with her and and her baby, right? And she starts like, and the baby's crying like as always, and she doesn't know how to keep get the baby to stop crying. Mm-hmm. But then she starts to, she says one of her like tongue twisters and the baby like laughs at it. And then she starts to see, she goes, oh, so she just starts saying them like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's like helps calm the baby down. It was like a nice little moment. <laughs> well, I think in this episode, uh, dear, her agent rival, what's the name? I don't oh, remember. um, um. Um, wow, I can't remember. Vanessa Gecko? <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> she hears the baby crying over the phone and sings a bit through the phone and the baby stops crying. hmm Saying that, you know, that's a trick that she learned. Yeah. And I, I like that duality because that's like Gecko's trick. That's her trick. But Mr. Car- or Mrs. Carolyn's, Princess Carolyn's trick, wow, what is wrong with me today, <clears throat> <clears throat> is the tongue twisters. Because she, you know, we've never heard her sing. We, I, maybe she can, maybe she can't. But she definitely can do those tongue twisters. And so she found her own little trick. Yeah, yeah, and it I is kind of like, cool. I like that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, and then is this the one where, like, so, like, Princess Carolyn and Vanessa Gecko end up planning that thing together? Like, uh, for the... Women who do it all ball or whatever it was, you know, (laughs) and is this the one where like closer to the end, she has that, she has like a conversation with her and she's like, you know, we really worked really well together. I can't believe we spent all these years hating each other. And she goes, I never hated you. (laughs) Did you hate me? (laughs) And she's just like, uh, (laughs) no, what? That's silly. No, which is interesting because like, Oh man, I keep having something stuck in my throat. Um, which is interesting because we've always seen sort of the relationship of these two characters from Princess Carolyn's perspective, which is like mm-hmm. that they're rivals and Princess Carolyn hates her. And so you just kind of assume that she hates Princess Carolyn too. They both have this mutual like disliking towards each other. But apparently she's never felt that way. <laughs> like so, which is interesting. Although it does feel weird because I feel like a lot of times in the previous episodes, it did seem like she did hate her too. But it might have just been like competitiveness, <clears throat> right? Yeah, of like maliciousness, right? Whereas like Princess Carolyn always saw her as like her arch enemy, but mm-hmm. um, Vanessa Gecko never really saw it that way, which is interesting. Um, yeah. And then do we want to move on to the next episode? I can't think of anything else, so sure. All right. So the next one is Feel Good Story. So this is a Diane episode. Um, So, yeah, we get a lot of, like, specific episodes about specific characters. So the first one is fully focused on Bojack. Second episode, fully focused on Princess Carolyn. Third episode is on Diane. And then I think the next one is Mr. Peanut Butter, mostly. Um, But anyways... So a feel good story. So this is the one where we first find out like that Diane. So Diane's traveling around the country with doing these stories for the girl Mm crush with her cameraman guy. um, Who we, who we find out there kind of have somewhat of a thing here, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, well, everything seems to be going well when she's like 
you know, doing your thing to take down the takedown stories, you know? Yeah. They're, you know, capitalist whatever's. Yeah. Yeah. Like this guy at the farm and she's like, he's like, yeah, I'm ready for some questions. So why do you have this? So let me tell us about your uh, sex trafficking ring. What? Oh no. (laughs) And just starts running away. She's like, yeah, got him. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And then, but then she's told she has to do a feel good story and she's like, well, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and she tries to do it with this like company, the one doll company or whatever. But it turns out that like they were bought up by White Whale Corporation, which is like, you know. Yeah, like a huge like conglomerate that just that just starts buying up every company, (coughs) Disney. um, (coughs) (laughs) <laughs> or, um, <clears throat> I don't know what that that was. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, continue. Um, so they they <laughs> so they get fed up with this and they decide, hey, let's take down White Whale, um, the White Whale Corporation. So they do want to do a takedown for them to show like how terrible they are, or whatever. Not, not before they <clears throat> were bought up by White Whale themselves. Right. But that that's why they're going to do their, like, we're, our final one is going to be on White Whale. They might fire us for it, but that's going to be our big hurrah to, like, knock them down a peg, you know? Mm-hmm. They go to investigate. They find out a guy died. And it's I, – I love that they, like, start investigating it. And then the White Whale guy's just like, yeah, I killed Wait. him. <laughs> you didn't know they just recently passed a law that – that rich people are allowed to kill, are legally allowed to murder. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> and the, like, obviously that's like ridiculous. Like that there, there wouldn't literally be a law like that in real life, probably. But like, it's sort Not of like a, but... right. It's sort of a play on how like rich people can get away with murder easily. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and how like people who are, you know, huge rich you know like literally i mean you think about it like any of the extremely you know multi-billionaire rich people of the world could easily get away with murder you know what i mean like yeah. hiring somebody else or like doing it in a way that's like it'll never get back to them they have great lawyers they have great you know they're they're like yeah, untouchable to right spend, yeah, to just oh you need resources to help me Whoops. Yep, there you go. Oh, now this guy died. And then, like, yeah, okay, it is ridiculous to think that they would actually, like, in this, it's implied that that White Whale is the one who literally killed the guy, like, physically, Mm -hmm. which, you know, the rich people probably wouldn't do that. But it's still, it's, it's like a metaphor for, like, in real life, how it's, like, it's tech, like, they can't legally do it technically, but they can get away with it and have no legal repercussions, you know what I mean? And like, so I thought that was kind of an interesting little thing. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, you, this is the, yeah, this is another one of those points in the show where they have like some sort of like political commentary on like, you know, just this or like society commentary, I guess, like on like the state of our society and like capitalist society and stuff. So they always, they always have some fun, some interesting, like, ways to kind of like look at that in the show. So and I feel like a lot of those episodes are, are it's like usually with Diane because she's oh, yeah. the one who's, you know, she's the she social activist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, like yeah. the social justice warrior type of character. Who's always like looking for that. Um, whereas like the rest of the characters don't really care. They just kind of go with, you know, where they're, where they're at in life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but it's also a good episode because it sort of establishes the relationship between her and Guy, which becomes uh, kind of important as the show goes on as well. So yeah, because there's like that you know final ep- final part of the episode where she decides to live in to move to um, where is it Chicago Chicago yeah yeah. yeah. Which I thought okay, this was kind of a funny little joke. So so the the in real life the Chicago's is it baseball? Yeah, baseball team is the Chicago Cubs. Okay. So like a cub is a like baby bear. So in this world it's the Chicago baby humans. All right. <laughs> 
it was just and Diane was trying to go on about how weird and how weird and offensive it is. And, and, and guys just like, no, it's just a celebration of your, of your wonderful human heritage. As it's like drinking poison. <laughs> oh yeah. Saying that like humans drink poison. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. Uh, fun, fun times. But yeah. So yeah, it's a good episode for to set up where Diane is at at this point, you know, in this season. So, yeah, um, I'm ready to move on to the next one if you are. Sure. All right. So the next episode is titled Surprise. Uh, right. So this is the Mr. Peanut Butter one, which this one has a really fun setup. Which is, you know, so Mr. Peanut Butter and pickles are arriving home and and Todd has an entire surprise party for them set up like a surprise or a surprise surprise wedding, wedding, Mm -hmm. um, which is just really weird. Like who does a surprise wedding? Like that's that's weird. Todd does. But I mean, you know what? Mr. Peanut Butter has been married three times before this. He does. He doesn't need a big, normal, special wedding, you know, whatever. Um, But anyways, and then they walk in the door and they're like arguing and she's like, I might break the wedding off and stuff. So they, everybody's like, crap so everybody continues hiding oh, yeah. um well, so he, he tells her that he was cheating right yeah like right and that's, when they're about to jump <clears throat> out and then they quickly hide like oh no we can't do this now so now they're sitting here having this fight while a bunch of people are just hiding in their house mm-hmm. um and like it's funny because they start talking about people like he starts talking about her parents and what he really thinks of them and they're just sitting right there mm-hmm. <laughs> think he's talking about her dad's anger issues and he just keeps like almost getting up to go fight him and the wife's just like no no shh shh." he's like oh yeah and what about that one guy i met at the gas station once why are you bringing him into this i don't know but he sucks too oh with a tear (laughs) dripping down his face oh my gosh yeah it's uh it's great um but yeah then eventually like most of the people get out of the house but then Bojack and Diane were upstairs, so they're still in the house. And then um, Princess Carolyn and Todd stay because the baby's missing and they try to fight, you know. So mm-hmm. some of them are still there. <laughs> it's, just, it's just really fun because it's like everybody trying to sneak around the house while Miss, like, and then, but it's also dealing with Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles' like relationship and their fight. Yeah. So it's just a really. They really like mixed the intense stuff with a comedy relief very well. Yeah. Oh yeah, they, they 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 definitely balance it really well in this episode. Which the show's always been really good at balancing like serious stuff with comedy, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, and this episode definitely definitely is a good example of that. Well, this time there's not even like a separation at all. It is just always happening on the str- on the screen all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, exactly. It's just. Yeah, exactly. Because it's really the entire episode is this one situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but they just they play it out really well, which this that's another thing the the show is really good at is taking one like making an entire episode out of like one thing, but like doing it really well. Like this episode, like you think the entire episode being just that scene is is essentially this one scene, this one main scene is like you know a lot for an entire episode, but like they handle it really well. Um, Kind of like, you know, how, like, there's literally an entire episode that's just Bojack giving a eulogy at a, at a yeah, few, but, like, true. which seems weird. Like, why would you do an entire episode of that? That seems like it's going to get really boring or whatever, but it doesn't, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's really just really well done, really well written, you know. Um, the writing for the show is always really strong. Um, it's the kind of show that goes like, oh, you don't think we can do this? try us here you go (laughs) there's like the eulogy one but there's also stuff like the uh like like the chicken farm one yeah where it's like other shows like wouldn't even go into this but we're not afraid to we'll just make it weirder that all the people are humans or or aren't humans they're also animals Mm -hmm. yeah but they like yeah, exactly. It's just it's just crazy. Or like, yeah, no the 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 show definitely balances the. It's it's weird because it's like all this ridiculous stuff happens that's just mm-hmm. so ridiculous, 
yet it still feels very real and like human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it definitely it balances that really well, and it balances that with like the comedy really well. It just it's it's a, a really good show at like balance balancing uh, all those things. Um, and and it, for me at least, I don't. I, I personally don't even think there's very many episodes of the show that I like dislike really like i think most uh, there's maybe a few episodes in like early season one that i was i'm a little eh on but like i feel like overall like i like pretty much almost every episode you know but mm-hmm. um i'm trying to i'm trying to think what else i want to say about this episode i mean um i i, I think the, the conclusion to their argument is a little interesting that like that uh, Piggles is going to start sleeping with other guys too to get to back, get back at Mr. Peanut Butter. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. I was like, what? I That's mean- how you deal with is, 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 you're like, is that really the best way to deal with, uh, you know, finding out that somebody cheated on you? Like, yeah, try to get back I mean, at them by cheating on somebody <laughs> to get even. I mean, I don't know, but my my thought process is that they're just going to end up being poly, right? Like that, that to me is like the best result out of this situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you'll you'll see what the conclusion to their relationship is. Um, I'm not going to like spoil it or anything here, but yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll see what happens. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like that that is a, a, a good conclusion to come to, though, at this point, because like this is the type of show that would do that. You know, like this show isn't afraid to sort of get into like different type of like non-conventional relationship types, right? Like, right. like they've already dealt with the, you know, like asexual uh, thing with Todd. And I mean, they've constantly in the show had like gay couples in the mm-hmm. back, like just throughout it. Like not even like they were focused on or like it was like seen as a weird thing. It was just, yep, these two people are in a relationship and they're, you know, like in yeah, this, the, the, therapy the therapy horse, horse yeah. mentions that he has a husband and it's not like a weird thing. Like, Oh, he has a, like, it's just, yep. He has a husband, you know, like, or like in season three, there was that wedding with two women, you know, there was just, there's just like things where it's like, it's just, um, you know, gay relationships are just a natural part of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't put a spot like on it or like shy away from it. It's just, right. yeah, it's here. The only time they did put like focus on it was with Herb and how he got fired because of it, because it was like in the nineties when it was, you know, Oh, this is a family show. We can't have a guy. It was, it was just, but it was seen that that viewpoint was like a bad thing kind of. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it's always, it's always been just kind of a thing that's there, you know? And so, so I, I kind of like, like I kind of admire the show a little bit for like, just kind of doing that. Um, I mean, I, I feel like nowadays a lot of, shows do that more nowadays than they used to anyways. But like, I feel like this show just kind of did, does it in a natural way where it just feels like it's just a natural part of the world. Like that's just the way it is, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I could, I could definitely see that that would seem like the, their, their relationship leading to becoming polyamorous could seem very likely in, your situation. I mean, we've already have seen a polyamorous relationship, right? With uh, uh, Hollyhock's right. dads, Hollyhock's eight dads. Eight, yeah. I was gonna say seven. What dad yeah. am I missing? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. I don't remember all their names. I know there's two with the last name Mannheim. I know that. All right, Mannheim, Mannheim. Guerrera. Um, one of them is McQuack. Oh, he's yeah. the he's the duck. One of them likes foreign films. Yeah, I don't remember which one that is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's hard one to keep a bear. <laughs> right, one of them's a bear, yeah. Yeah. But um well anyways. Um Which that's a good joke in about itself, having the gay guy be a bear. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but I don't know. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I mean, Just I guess it makes small, sense. I guess it makes sense. Um, but anyways, let's get let's get back to where we're at. So, uh, do you have much more to say about the the episode? Does that mean? Not really. Besides, there's this one scene where Pickles 
you know, they're hiding from pickles at the moment and she she's on her stream and someone messages her to go take a hot bath when she's stressed. Apparently it was Todd. He's like, Yes. Oh wait, and he's oh, like and sitting in the, in the bathtub. He's like, like, <laughs> like why did you do that then? <laughs> oh geez, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and Bojack tries to do his um tie the bed sheets together to mm-hmm. get out the window thing. The yeah. running joke of this season. I that it's a it's a good running joke. It's brought up mm-hmm. it's in the first episode, it's in this episode, and it's in the sixth episode, I believe. Um but yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good running joke. I like it. Because it's like obviously he knew how to do that from it was in a, it was in an episode of Horsing Around and then mm-hmm. it's just a thing he does. Um Oh, another another kind of little thing that they explore in this episode is so this is so you know Bojack is still in rehab so he's just allowed to go out for this party, um, and they sort of have Bojack finding out that Diane is moving and they're discussing it throughout the whole episode sort of, right. um, which is interesting because you get there's this he it's sort of a conflict for Bojack because Bojack likes having her around because she's sort of a supportive friend who helps him, but he also realizes like she's her own person. She needs to have her own life. And there's that, mm-hmm. there a really interesting line that I like closer. I think it's closer to the end of the episode, wherever it is, where, where she's just like, you know, like I, where she says like, you know, do you really want me to like, do you, do you need me to stay to help you or whatever? And he's, and he just says like, that's not a friendship. That's a hostage situation, you know, which I thought was kind of a cool line. It was like, yeah, you know, he's like, like, yeah, you know, if you are really just good friends, like you're going to let allow your uh, friend to live their life the way, you know, if they decide that it's better for them to move to Chicago mm-hmm. then you know, yeah, let them move to Chicago. Um, if you love something, set it free. <laughs> Right, right, exactly, and and it's interesting because it's like you you get the sense that like earlier on in the show, if this happened, BoJack would be very like, oh, let's try to I'm gonna try to get her to not move. Ooh, I'm gonna try to maybe I'll try to break her and Guy up so that she doesn't want to move there anymore. Ooh, I'm gonna try to like you know, mm-hmm. like in season one, he tried to sabotage their wedding. You know, like like older BoJack would have done tried to like do something because he would have been very possessive right. over his friends like i need her here uh but now he's sort of getting better so he's kind of just like you know what yeah go to chicago like that's if that's what you want that's great you know uh, which shows a nice growth uh for for bojack which i which is you know again that's sort of the main focus of this first half is just showing and and exploring the growth of bojack and bojack finally sort of getting in a better place in his life. <clears throat> um, but yeah, let's move on to the next, as long as you are ready for that. Yep. Yep. So the next is titled a little uneven is all. Um, right. is this so, an entirely flashback episode or is it? Uh, okay. Let me, let me read the description. Dr. Champ tells Bojack it's time to leave rehab. Mr. Peanut butter's mm-hmm. reputation takes a hit. In Chicago, Diane wrestles with writer's block. Okay, so there's like a – this is an episode with like three things going on. So the, previously, each episode has – the first four episodes have sort of been like one episode focusing on one – on in sort of a main thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one is sort of a, more of a balancing episode with different things going on. So, yeah, so this is where uh, BoJack is – you know, Dr. Champ is like, all right, Bojack, you've been in rehab for like six months. You need to go. And like, and like, I think the final, like, there's like the one person who's like the last person who is in Bojack's original group of people leaves at the beginning. And he's like, right. so just to show how long he's been there, he's been there for like six months, you know, you sign up for six weeks, but he kept signing up for another six weeks uh, for like six months straight. Cause he sort of has this fear of like, he's like, I can do it in here. I can handle it in here. I can handle being sober in here. But what about out in the real world? Right. You know, which which I think is a is a logical fear to have. 
Um, cause I mean, think about like, you know, how many people go to rehab, but then relapse after getting out, you know what I mean? Like it's, mm-hmm. so it's kind of, uh, yeah. makes sense. You know, it's easy to do something in a controlled <clears throat> environment, like an experiment, you know, cause it's just, yeah. that's the only thing happening, but with all kinds of other stuff in there, thrown in the mix, messing it up, you might yeah. not. Yeah, exactly. It's easy in rehab because rehab is designed to make it easy to mm-hmm. to quit. You know, it's designed for that. You know, they don't allow alcohol in. Um, they have all these ther- therapy sessions. They have all these like extra things that you can do. Um, you know, you're not responsible for your own kind of life and, and schedule and stuff. You You have somebody else who's sort of in charge of that for you. So it's like makes life easy. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. Cause in, in Bojack, you know, knows that whenever he makes decisions on his own, he tends to make the wrong decisions, you know, as we've seen throughout the entire show. Um, so he's kind of like, <laughs> he knows his tendencies, even though he is pretty much better he doesn't it's hard to view right. it that way it's hard for him to know until you know yeah yeah <clears throat> he knows what he's been like and he's afraid of turning like that again as soon as yeah you know he goes back to where he was mm-hmm. yeah exactly um so um so that's sort so that's happening in this episode um, and I think this is also the episode that brings in that one character. Um, the, the guy that was going to replace him in the fancy room. Yeah. But then has like one second of advice from Bojack and goes, yep, I'm sober getting leaves. <laughs> just like, what? Oh, right, right. He pops, in, pops his head in and he's just like, well, I got to leave for like a photo shoot like in, in a few minutes. It's like, and Bojack is like, you can't just do therapy in a few minutes. And the therapy was just like, says like one line that's like just some gibberish metaphor. And he's like, and whoa, he goes, that's all I needed. Yeah. Oh, my life feels changed. I feel energized. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, and like, then what? he, yeah. He also meets Mr. Peanut Butter, which is interesting. So this is mm-hmm. the episode where Mr. Peanut Butter is like, you know, everybody hates him now, which is like a new thing for him because he's his thing has always been everybody loves him. He's amazing. Nobody hate, you know, mm-hmm. he's a good dog. <laughs> he's a good boy. <laughs> um, but now everybody found out that he cheated on his uh, fiance and everything. And now everybody hates him. So and which is it, it is that is an interesting thing to explore is like, what if the guy who's known for everybody liking him is suddenly um nobody likes him nobody likes him yeah yeah it's interesting how he deals with it too because he doesn't really he just keeps acting exactly the same right yeah yeah exactly um but I, i i think it's funny the conclusion they come to at the end with that where it's like Oh, just make everybody think you have depression. Then everybody's going to feel bad for you. And now everybody's going to like you again. <laughs> yeah. Because now he's the face of depression. Or I don't know if they come to that conclusion in this episode or the next episode. I don't remember. Because episode seven is titled The Face of Depression. So I don't mm-hmm. I don't remember. But either way, um, I just think that's a funny conclusion they come to. It's just like, okay. Um, Very sudden, too, because... Princess Carolyn just kind of pushes him in front of like a car moving at like two inches a minute. Yeah. And he just, and she's just like, yo, I, I seen him. He jumped in front of the car. He, he's a very sad dog. Just like the meme that she made. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then everybody's like, oh no, do you have depression? Well, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So it's an interesting little thing. Um, and then the other thing that's happening in this episode, it says in Chicago, Diane wrestles with writer's block. So she moves to Chicago. She's with Guy and she's struggling with writer's block throughout the episode, which she's trying to write her like memoir or whatever, which she's mm. struggling with, you know, having a, a brief 
catchy title with. Um, I don't remember what she said with the title was, but it was like <laughs> some like one last thing that I'll shut about this forever, and then a list of all the things that she's going to talk about. And then she goes, she goes, uh, part one. She's like, wait, if this is supposed to be the last thing that I write, that is this supposed to be the last thing, and then I'll shut up forever? Then how could it be part one? Wait, mm-hmm. no. <laughs> And she's like, if this is supposed to be definitive, then why? Well, how can it be part one? Never mind. Um, but I, it, the ending is a little interesting. Um, so, so throughout the episode, she's talking about how he he mentions he's like, she says something about how she used to take antidepressant pills, like she needed, and she mm-hmm. stopped because, well, first off, they, it made her gain weight, and also it. Um, she didn't want to write. She didn't have any motivation. Yeah, she didn't have any motivation to write because she didn't have like like she uses her like sadness and her like whatever to like give her the motivation to write something interesting, right? Um, right. Which is a not a good view to have on it. Like you can be happy and still write good, create good art, you know. But like she just kind of has this sort of view of it that is interesting. Um, And then it 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 is a kind of weird thing though when like you only write stuff about like the things that you passionately hate and despise. Mm -hmm. So if you like lessen that hate and despise, like, you know, disgust, then it's reasonable to assume that would affect your writing process, but like, you can't let that control you like that. You'll just end up hurting yourself. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like at the end of the day, your happiness should come before that you know (laughs) um but then that sort of ends on an interesting note in this episode where she's like she's you know yeah he's like can i see it and she's like no no, you can't see what i wrote yet and she pulls it up and all she has written is i am terrible i am terrible over and over again Mm -hmm. on the page um and that's sort of where her story ends in this episode so that's yeah yeah this is like this is like the episode that starts like branching off all the stories to like yeah. what they are like need to be by the end of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we can move on to the next one if you'd like though. Sure. Okay, so the next episode is titled The Kidney Stays in the Picture. Um so obviously that deals with Todd's side story of like the kidney thing, um, but that's not the only thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the things that's going on is this is the one where Bojack is dealing with Dr. Champ being drunk again. Right. Cause he takes, like we were saying before, he takes a sip of the vodka, he immediately like chokes on it, spits it out and throws it out the window and it gets mixed up in bottles of water. Right. Right. So, and then he ends up drinking that one, the wrong mm-hmm. one. And, and, this is, this episode Bojack uses his you know tie the sheets together to get out the window trick again. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, he he starts to get, he finds him in a bar too, and it's like he he starts to see that he's like digressing and stuff. And then there's like a moment in the bar where they have this conversation that actually helps with his like with um, Bojack's therapy that he needs, like discussing his like. Mm-hmm. It's like he finally gives him like good therapy, you know. Well, he's a drunk. Yeah, <laughs> and keeps going check, please. Like as check, like a please. Why do they keep bringing me a check? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then it the, it's funny because it ends and Bojack takes him to rehab, but a different rehab because he doesn't want like him to be at the in one that he works at. Right. And it turns out to be r- literally right next door. <laughs> Like, why is there two different rehab places, like, right next to each other? Like, why? <laughs> I mean, it works out. Um, yeah. Um, and, and I think this is the one where at the end, Bojack is like, he has that moment where, she, where you know, he's like, because he, he's, he's drunk stuff and he's like, he's like, where are you going? And he like leaves him over here and he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm leaving. He's like, I'm, he just says like. I'm sober or something. I think that might've been the line. And it's just like this moment where he's just. The therapy horse says like, you know, 
never forget this. You're the one that broke me and made me do this. That's right. Yeah. And he says, and he's like, I, I never forget. I remember everything. I'm sober. Like, and then that's right. That's what it was. Um, which that's actually an interesting thing because he does never forget anything really. Like all the bad things he's done is in his life. He tends to like hold on to. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, yeah. But now it's, <laughs> You know, like before, he might have been blackout drunk for a ton of the terrible stuff that he did. So he doesn't remember it. But now he doesn't have that anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, which that that then leads into the next episode, which we'll get to once we cover some of the other stuff going on in this episode. Um, because what else is going on? So Todd is meets his like stepdad i guess who he took the last mm-hmm. name of i don't know why it just seems weird that you take your stepdad's last name either way mm-hmm. it, it doesn't matter I, I guess like he was his stepdad but he like grew up with him like he he grew up as if he was his real dad kind of but he's like so his his stepdad is like very di- like literally the opposite of todd right yeah structured, so he's serious um right straightforward like he there's that 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 point where they try to sneak into the place and he like, you know, just just dis, disguise himself as like just like a a, a janitor or whatever and he gets yeah, in he and he's like, just <sighs> takes off his tie and puts right Todd in a trash can. And Todd goes, "That was amazing," and he goes, "No, that was straightforward and logical." <laughs> I did I did love like Todd came up to like the bouncer or whatever you want to call it, the bodyguard. Yeah. It was just like, you're Diane. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yep, that's me. And he says, I'm Todd, like 30 different times. Yeah, he's like, like, I thought you were Diane. Well, yeah, Diane. It sure is my name is Todd. Like, yeah, yeah. He's just like, I am Diane Nguyen. If, and if my name isn't her, Todd or whatever, he said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> that didn't work. His stepdad just puts him in a trash can walks up to him and it just starts speaking like two or three different languages to the guy it's just like uh sure go go in yeah i love the weird conclusion they come to at the end of the episode though because he's like because so he's like his whole thing is he 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 was really hard on todd as a kid because he knew like the you know it's it's difficult to make it in the world and stuff. And like things don't mm-hmm. just work out. You have to, you know, work hard to get where you want and stuff. Yet for Todd, things do just seem to work out, you know? Yeah. Which we've seen that throughout the entire show. And, but his thing at the end, he goes, I, I realized that for you, things do just work out because you're white. <laughs> like that. <laughs> like he just <laughs> brings up the whole, like, <laughs> Um, so I thought I, was, I thought that was it's, kind of it's funny. It's such a like sudden like swing <laughs> of the bat, like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like, Which I always is... thought it was weird that like I was like, so he's Todd seems like he's completely white, but his last name is Chavez. You know, I'm like that's weird, but it mm. turns out it was his stepfather's name. Um, so that's interesting, I guess. Um. Like that entire episode is just like vaguely setting up this one joke until finally the bodyguard like calls Todd a scamp and then just walks away basically <laughs> for that one like and he's just final like, bowling pin. And his stepdad's just, dad's just like, what? <laughs> what is happening? How did... <laughs> How did this work out? You just broke in and stole a kidney and you're just like... <laughs> Oh, you scamp! Oh, ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. Because that's just that's just the way things work with Todd. Like, I it's just I don't know. That's just how Todd is. Dude, whatever, you know. Yeah, Todd has just Todd <laughs> just has like an aura of innocence around him. Apparently. Yep, and he's got a he's got a really soothing face too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that kid with the face. <laughs> um, yeah, I I, I loved. Uh, Earlier in an earlier season, there was a Princess Carolyn tongue twister where they were trying to set Todd up as like the boyfriend of a supermodel or something like that. Oh yeah. It's like 
it was like whatever the supermodel's name was gets like a hoity toy boy toy. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, yeah. No, Todd Todd's great. Mm-hmm. Um ta 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 yeah. <laughs> we can move on to the next episode if you'd like. <clears throat> Was there anything with Mr. Peanut Butter in this one? Uh, I don't really know. There might have been in the background. Oh, wait, no. Okay, this is the episode. This isn't with Mr. Peanut Butter, but this is the episode where the uh, the assistants go on strike. Right. Which I think was a hilarious joke because now no, but literally none of the fame, like none of the people know how to do anything. None of the mm-hmm. people who run Hollywood like actually know how to do anything. Because Hollywood they just immediately falls apart. Like, I was gonna make a reservation, but I don't know how. How do I use this cell phone? What do I? How do I make a call? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I forgot all my passwords. What's my mother's maiden name? <laughs> yeah, what's my mother's maiden name? What? Like your assistant knows that, but you don't. Like mm-hmm. what? <laughs> um, or That's like terrible security practice too for like only your assistant to yeah. know your passwords. Well, and Mr. Peanut Butter and the one guy are like in like having a conversation like oh we should start we should set up a, a meeting for blah 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 like oh but my assistant is went on strike yeah mine too huh yeah i guess we can't do it it's just like you can't figure out how to do it on your own okay <laughs> or like you you can't just do it right now while you're face to face yeah like, we have to set up a meeting later and not do it right now when he when we have 20 minutes to spare mm-hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> i don't know it's just funny <sighs> gotta love I, I just love when it when it um has these like fun comments on like just like mm-hmm. the hollywood lifestyle and stuff like the you know the hollywood industry stuff like it's like <laughs> As soon as the assistants are, uh, it's great. But also, I don't know if it's this one or the next. No, it's the next one where they they continue that whole thing. I think. Right, I think the only thing with Mister Peanut Butter and all that is just him like becoming the face of depression. Yeah, I think that's more the next episode. But I don't. I don't know. It might be a little bit this one, but. They start introducing the the pig lady and the guy who are start investigating the. Like, well, that's or, not until Aaron episode and, eight. Oh, it is. Yeah, that doesn't happen until episode eight. I thought they were like introduced like a episode no. or two earlier. No, that's yeah. That entire thing is episode eight. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. So we're not even there yeah, yet. We can move on. Um. So yeah, we'll go on to episode seven, which is titled The Face of Depression. So this explores that whole Mr. Peanut Butter thing um, being the face of depression. Um, I think it also concludes the – it shows more of the um, assistance on strike thing, which mm-hmm. – <clears throat> so Princess Carolyn and and Lenny Turtle Tob are sort of like leading the negotiations with the, the assistants – and they sort of get all the assistants to like – they give like the people who are leading the strike better jobs so that they end the strike. And then um, – but then Princess Carolyn feels bad because she remembers her – when she was an assistant and she was like you know going through the same terrible things that they're mm-hmm. going through. Yeah, she stops him from – her and assistant, her current assistant from so signing. Yes. But – and what she does – Instead, is gets a new assistant to lead the negotiations, mm-hmm. who is the best assistant of all time, <laughs> um, um, Judah. Yeah, which Judah. this, I'm so happy they return, they bring the character back because I got, gotta love Judah. Um, because yeah, the last time we saw him was in season four, so it's nice to bring him back. I love this introduction too, because they like walk in and Turtle Top is just like, "Who's in my chair?" And he turns around. Hmm. Our meeting was supposed to start like four minutes ago. It was like our meeting starts supposed supposed to start at like nine. It's nine oh four. Why don't we put this on the table for today and start on time tomorrow? 
And he just walks away. He's just in turtle dove. just like, oh, okay. Yep. It's like no idea what's happening. I love it because it's like, yeah, no, I know. I just love Judah. He's mm-hmm. great. Um, and then um, the main thing that's happening in this episode, like I think the, the thing that's the most important is so Bojack – which actually the opening of the episode, I think this was at the very beginning of the episode, like the before the intro opening, you know, um, Bojack finally returns to his house. Right. And there's and that he scene. Starts cleaning up. He starts, right. But he starts room to clean up, but he's in his house. All he can think about is all the terrible things that have happened in the house. Like he, mm-hmm. he, he's, he keeps getting these like, flashbacks of all like he looks at like the dent in the wall and remembers when he was like in the last season when he was like yelling to get the pills he's like oh the pills now Just punch the wall you know he's like he's like just remembering all these things and and it's like now that he's sober and he has time to like actually think it back on these things it's like he can't stay in this house you know right. so um which sort of starts the episode is him sort of traveling around different places uh, it says, you know, the the description here says Bojack travels around the country, reconnecting with loved ones, while Mister Peanut Butter embarks on his own national tour as the face of depression. Um, but anyways, so he travels around um, different places. So he he goes to see Hollyhock. Um, he goes, I think, right? Doesn't he? Yeah, he does. That's right, mm-hmm. and. I think he goes to see Diane in Chicago, then Hollyhock. Yeah. Then he goes back to California. Yeah. Oh, and he tries to get the job as their acting teacher, their drama teacher. At Hollyhock's college. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which is a nice, I think a nice way to take his character because it's like, you know, you're at a certain age. He's he does. He's he's like a good actor or whatever. Like, yeah, take a take a job as an acting teacher, you know? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um and um yeah and and I think one of the more interesting parts of the episode is when he went to see Diane so there's like that scene he's there in um he's in Diane's place or whatever it's kind of a mess and um he talks to her he has that conversation with her and she's uh, sort of discusses her like depression or whatever. And I I don't remember exactly how the conversation went, but I remember it was a good, interesting one. It's like the scene where Diane is like, I keep flipping over that nothing and there's more nothing. And then there's, you know, I keep hoping Mm -hmm. I can find something, but there's always more nothing. And, you know, Um, but yeah, so she like leaves to go do whatever, and then Bojack wakes up and the place is a mess. And it's like, it's, it's like a simple moment, but I really like it. It's just Bojack just cleans her place for her. You know, there's just yeah. like, there's a lot of like little moments of Bojack just, you know, just doing something nice for somebody, not to get like anything out of it, just to do something nice. Right. Which it's, it's kind of like a visual metaphor for what he said in that conversation, which I believe was something along the lines of, it was basically a roundabout way of saying, you helped me get the help that I need. So, you know, I can help you now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's little moments of him doing something nice for somebody. Um, like, like he, he sees Mr. Peanut Butter again at the, and they go to like a museum where they see like the set of, Mr. Peanut Butter show. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I guess we finally get that crossover episode. And <laughs> Mr. Peanut Butter, they, they like act out like a crossover episode. And like Mr. Peanut Butter is constantly like braiding character because he's just so happy about it and he starts crying. Yeah, like like previously Bojack wouldn't have wouldn't have done this. He would have been like, Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, mm-hmm. Mr. Peanut Butter, what the heck is wrong with you, you idiot? You know, you and every left. time I, I'm in the same room as you. The hell. But this time he just like he just plays along just to be nice. He's like it's nice, and then he also does a nice thing for for Todd because he remember here he, Todd was telling him about the his dating app, right. the asexual dating app, and how nobody else is on it, 
and like Todd is waiting for somebody else to be on it. And he a few times over hears this woman working at the one place at the airport. Mm-hmm. I, I love the progression of this though, because <clears throat> like she gives him change and it's like be the change you want to see in the world and like starts crying as like I don't want to see you leave change. Like just this ridiculous stuff. And then something about a crazy idea about a house being made of cinnamon buns. And then finally her breaking up with her boyfriend because you no, know, she's asexual and he's not. Right. Because I yeah. just love this progression of it because it was so ridiculous. And my thought was immediately like, this girl's like perfect for Todd. Like, and then, love, and then it reveals that she's asexual. And I'm like, this girl is perfect for Todd. <laughs> right. And he goes, He's like, I don't want to assume anything because, like, it, she doesn't s- explicitly state that she's asexual, but it's like kind of implied. He's like, right. I don't want to assume anything, but there's this app you might be interested in, and like, yeah, like and then yeah. it shows it shows Todd sitting there on the app, sitting there on his phone, and then he just sees like a notification, like you got a match, and he's just like, oh, and it's like, it's just a really nice thing, you know. It, it's it's just mm-hmm. Bojack. He's just doing nice things for people, you know, yeah, not to I get anything that, out of it, just to just to. Uh, be nice um, and you also f- interestingly find out so he goes to get like his hair cut by his his old old uh, person who used to cut his hair Sharona because mm-hmm. um, like he sees her at AA and like you know at first he's, it's uh, kind of awkward but they because you know last time they met each other he kind of screwed her over uh, by having yeah. her be blamed on bringing the alcohol in that Sarah Lynn drank and said you know whatever um, but they end up she ends up doing it and cutting the hair for him and stuff and you find out that he actually has had gray hair for this for pretty much probably the entire show but apparently he's been dyeing his hair mm-hmm. to like make himself seem young but now he just kind of goes with his his gray hair um which is kind of nice because it's kind of like he's kind of just accepting where he's at in his life. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I might as well show that I'm older now. Like I'm not – and it, it's also kind of like a visual way to like show his change in a way. Like he's a different person now. So like yeah, his, he has gray hair now. Um, but um, – one thing there was a, there was a one funny joke though that that was when he first went to the because he decided to go to AA, um, and he goes up to to grab some food at the little food table there and there's a fruit plate that has it's nothing but honeydew. But honeydew. <laughs> 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 he goes, uh, he's like, what the? He's like, you've got to be kidding me! What the hell? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, which is just great because that that's one of my favorite like side jokes is his hatred for honeydew. Yeah. <laughs> like earlier on, he has it's a like true despise of it, doesn't he? It's like they always think cantaloupe gets a plus one. You don't get a plus one. <laughs> like <laughs> Um But it, it's just funny that they bring it to like literally an entire fruit plate with just honeydew and he's just mm-hmm. like <laughs> It's just funny. Uh I think I've had honeydew like once or twice, but I don't remember what it tastes like at all. It's just kind of bland. Like it's not yeah. gross, but it's just, I've always thought it was just kind of boring and eh. it's just kind of, it's like all the other stuff is better. So it's like, why even why bother? Why waste time? Yeah. I don't know. It just always seemed very bland and like it didn't have much flavor to it, you know? Mm. Um, But um, yeah, so that was a funny little joke, but yeah, no, it's a, Good episode. Oh, also, there's he he goes to that like horse old horse town reenactment thing, which was kind of funny. Oh yeah, but also kind of cool because it was like he was it was like this weird cathartic moment for him, I guess. Um, being with like other horses, which is interesting because it's like if you remember in the one episode, I think it was the last episode. He when he was talking to Doctor Champ, he said something about how like he has this like natural hatred for horses because of he associates horses with like his parents and how badly they treated him or something. Mm -hmm. And like anytime he sees horses, it's like a reminder of his parents or whatever. And so it's almost like he's, but he's a horse himself. So it's like, that's where a lot of his self-hatred comes from. Um, 
And, you know, he kind of got past that. And like now he's just kind of going to this place where there's all these horses. So maybe this is sort of like a metaphor for like him getting past his like hatred for or not hatred, but like his his negative feelings towards just horses in general, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So there's also the moment when they, you know, do the handshake that you do in church and, you know, peace be with you. And mm-hmm. just doing it over and over again to as many people as he can find it. He's, his eyes just go wider and wider. It's like, okay, this is happening. He's like, yeah, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's nice. It's a nice thing. Yeah. Um, but it's just like, it's like a nice little, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't remember how the episode ends, but I think it ends around that at that point, but I don't remember like, yeah, Bojack finds out he does get the job as the acting teacher and stuff. And right. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't remember quite how it ends either. Yeah. I don't remember the like ending moment or anything, but, um, w- yeah. So those first seven episodes sort of concludes the first main first half story because the, the eighth episode really doesn't show any of our like main, main characters. So the, these first seven episodes is sort of, st- showing where all of our main characters are at. I think, oh, it also shows Diane going to pick up Guy and she's like gained weight. So it shows that she started taking her right, right. Um, thing again. So uh, yeah, that's sort of a, a cool little uh, thing. Chubby Diane. Yeah. Yeah, but like that's sort of like a nice moment because it, it's... It, it's sort of showing sort of just all the characters ending in sort of a good place almost like, so mm-hmm. she finally decided to take her antidepressants and it's, you know, she's with guys, she's happy, you know, I mean, uh, I don't know where, where are the other characters? I don't know. I think, Oh yeah. Uh, Todd finally, you know, becomes the nanny for princess Carolyn's baby. Well, that was a few episodes ago, but you know, like everybody's in a good place basically is sort of where this ends episode ends and that's sort of i think where the first half is it's sort of just leaving all of our characters in a good place because the next episode it's like you you leave bojack in a good place and then Mm you suddenly get the next episode which implies that that's might not stay that way for very long yeah um so the the eighth episode is titled a quick one while he's away so I'm guessing that that title is like implying, you know, because Bojack's away, like the main characters are away. Here's an episode that literally doesn't have them at all, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Either way, <clears throat> whatever that title is exactly supposed to mean. But um, so this episode follows a few separate things going on. One is the investigation with these yeah. reporters, which the reporter, she's just, they're just hilarious because they're like, cla- like, oh, they're, they're talking as if they're in like the, the twenties or something like, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're investigating the death of Sarah Lynn, which people are like, um, yeah, she overdosed and died. Like it's a close case. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, and they keep going into it and they gradually discover yeah. All of Bojack's involvement with it. Yeah, which that's actually an interesting thing. I don't remember where in this first half of the season it was, but there was that moment where we find out like where it shows a flashback of Bojack when Sarah Lynn died. He mm-hmm. actually um lied and said that he wasn't with her when she died and that he showed up later and found her there dead. Right, right. Which wasn't true so that's actually i don't remember where it showed that in the season but it they it was i don't remember which episode it, it, showed, it was like a flashback somewhere maybe it was the mm-hmm. first episode or one of the first few episodes yeah and then i think it was the same flashback where kitty cop whatever his name is oh yeah he's like he's like nope it's a shut and closed case yeah the mm-hmm. and bojack just keeps talking to him about it it's like well i I don't need any more information than that. You are good to go. <laughs> yep. 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 Um, 
But yeah, so they start investigating that, which th- it leads them down a lot of interesting, like little rabbit holes, especially when they go to that AA place and they meet that guy, which if you remember in the episode where Sarah Lynn died, they went to an AA meeting during that episode and mm-hmm. Bojack had that scene where he was like, yeah, I did this terrible thing and her name is Penny Carson. You can look her up and like, it's in, she lives in New Mexico. And it's like, th- it was just kind of played off as just like a, a ridiculous, like what, why, what is he doing kind of moment? And like, and then you kind of right. brush it off as you go on. You're like, okay, that was just another one of his crazy drunk moments. Right. But now it's like, that comes back to that, that moment comes, does come back to bite him in the ass yeah. because like the one guy who was, you actually, this character that they meet and, and, and interrogate was there in that episode in, in the AA meeting. Like you, like I, you know, you can go back to that episode. He, this guy was there and he discusses, like the, tells them about it and you're like, Oh, <laughs> Oh no. Everything's uh, going wrong. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because throughout this episode, you're think you're realizing you're like all of Bojack's bad things he's done in the past are gonna come. It seems like it's all gonna come back to to haunt him, right? And like it's all gonna resurface, and people are gonna find out about it, and he's gonna be canceled, and you know all that, you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Probably gonna be fired from his new job, you know whatever. Um, yeah, he's finally got something good going, and now it's gonna be ruined by his right. past. And it's like you almost are like you're like no, don't let this happen. But in but at the same time, you think well, he did do these things. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and he did do these things and never had any real consequences. So like, it, like yeah, technically he probably should, uh, you know, face the consequences. But like, but like as an audience member, you're like yeah, but like we, I saw him. He he's better now. Like he he has like rehabilitated yeah. like he's he is a better person he's legitimately a better person now like you know um so it's it's interesting and i mean and it's a very cliffhanger this is a huge cliffhanger episode because oh, like yeah. and, and it's the the you know when i first watched it you know this was you know you had to wait i had to wait i don't know however many months for the next stuff the next episodes and i was like i remember just being left with this like Oh my gosh! I How long is it? The conclusion? Oh no! no. Um, well, yeah, I it's... remember. I had a similar experience with something different. I was reading the manga Chainsaw Man, which is mm-hmm. it's very good, but the part where I caught up with the English translation was the part where something absolutely terrible happened, and so I had to like carry that for like an entire week waiting for the next chapter to come out just being like Ooh. but like it was so good up until then and now everything's bad what's gonna happen ah yeah i mean that's how people used to have used to watch tv shows you know yeah now everything's like like you know back in the day people watched avatar you know appa got taken away and they had to wait another week to find out more you know mm-hmm. um <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. And then the other things that are going on in this episode is, so we see Hollyhock at college and she's kind of nervous about drinking for the first time. Cause she, her friends, you know, they're like, you don't have to, but she's like, yeah, but I want to, it's supposed to be fun. You know, kind of, which I, it's interesting. Cause you, you kind of get the sense that maybe her nervousness of drinking comes from knowing that like her family has a history of alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> like her father uh was definitely an alcoholic her, father, um, her, her brother yeah was is what well, well, was isn't anymore not um, only that it, she was drugged by her right that, stepmother so that's like would that be considered a stepmother i don't know i don't know her father's wife so that's also a weird way of putting it, but sure, yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, yeah, and like that traumatized her and stuff. So it's like it, mm-hmm. it, you kind of see where her like nervousness to drink comes from. Uh, but anyway, so she's at the party. She's really nervous. She's starting to have a panic attack, and then a guy comes in and helps her out. And 
weirdly enough, first time I watched this, I don't recognize who this guy is at first. I did. It's P. It's repeat. Yeah, it is. I, I, I remember I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, he looks similar, but like, you know, he he looks older, obviously. You know, he's in college now. Like, he, has, he has a beard, right? And then until there's that moment where he that at the end where he describes what he what happened, which is like, which I think that was the final moment of the episode. Yeah, pretty um, much. And he goes, yeah, like he's like, you know who that person was? He was actually famous. He was his name was, and then like, just ends right there. And, like mm-hmm. you know what he's gonna say, and it's <laughs> it's it terrible cliffhanger. Which again, there's another moment of like looking back on that episode. You know, he, you know, this girl was drunk, alcohol poisoning. He just left her at the hospital with her boyfriend, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they're, you know, kid, they're, they're underage, you know, drinking, whatever. It's like, it's probably 17 years old, um, which is a terrible thing. And it's like, and you, but you don't really think about it again because it, it's a TV show. These aren't main characters or anything. They're just side characters. So you don't right. really think about it again. But now you realize you're like, yeah something like that happening would really affect affect somebody. He said like mm-hmm. how he had to go to therapy for a while and stuff like that. And it's like, you're like, Oh, <laughs> so it, you know, you kind of see that like these things that, you know, you know, it's a TV show. So typically, you know, little details like that, you just kind of gloss over and go, yeah, move on, whatever. That's just a little side thing. Right. Um, and you don't really think about it again, but that's, this shows that like, yeah, I mean, these aren't were just side characters who weren't that important but they you know this show shows that they are still real people who like, you know are affected by these things i like to like compare it to D because a lot of new players in D would just do things right you know they expect it to be like a tv show or a video game or you know media that some things you know you just can't give them consequences for because you know it'll derail the campaign or the story that you're trying to follow or you know kill them and then they can't play yeah but in yeah. D, a good dm is not afraid to give you consequences for anything that you do yeah 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 like you killed that farm farm boy like as you pass through town there's a hunt on your head now yeah you have you know there is a blood hunt and you will be haunted by bounty hunters for the rest of your life because of that. Yeah. Or oh, whatever yeah. Whatever else they come up with. Yeah, exactly. It's it's sort of like yeah, exactly. Because yeah, and that's the thing. That was that was season two. That it's been a while since then. Mm-hmm. And and at this point, you're just kind of not even really thinking about it. And then as soon as you said that, I was like, wait, yeah, that is that same guy. That is Pete Repeat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, and I think the first time I watched this episode, um. It, it I it had been a little bit since I had seen the previous episodes, so maybe I wasn't thinking about it. So maybe if I had watched them all right in a row before I watched this the first half of the season, maybe I would have remembered right away who it was. But yeah, I remember like that moment just being like, <laughs> oh, like oh. Um, well, it's interesting because it's like now Hollyhock knows of the terrible thing that Bojack did, which is like, you're like, okay, so how is this going to affect how she views him? Mm-hmm. Which is kind of annoying. Cause you, you know, you think like have Hollyhock is it is like a good thing in his life right now. And, and you know, he's planning on going to work at the same school she goes to. So like you kind of hope, Oh yeah, maybe they'll be able to like hang out as brother and sister sometimes. And like, you know, start to, because they'll be living like, you know, really close to each other. So like, they'll maybe have like, start a good brother, sister relationship again, you know, but like, is this going to negatively affect that? Because she views, knows this and maybe views him differently. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of, it's kind of a, (laughs) yeah. And you mentioned how like this stuff happened season two. Mm -hmm. It makes it so much better that it's been so long. Cause like you truly like, pretty much forgotten about it you don't consider it anymore like even if you did at one point it's way too long for you to do now yeah 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 exactly i always i always love that in media when like something from way far back comes back because like 
it 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 allows it to truly come out of nowhere from like but the also viewer's perspective. It makes it come out of nowhere, but also not come out of nowhere. Like it comes out of nowhere and it's a surprise, but it's not a surprise that doesn't yeah. make sense. It's it, not like, oh, come on. Sense. You just, it makes sense because it's been, it has been set up, but it's just so long, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a, re- it was a really effective moment, I think. Really effective moment to end the episode on. Uh, Cause that's the real big cliffhanger moment at the end. Um, but um, then the other thing that's happening in this episode is we see, um, oh my gosh, what's her name? The Kelsey Jennings is like gets a job for a movie, right? And it's and oh, she has right. a friend of hers who's also a director, and he's directing. And they they have conversations with each other. He's directing a movie with. Uh, Gina in it, you know, Gina from the, from season five. Mm -hmm. Um, And and, Gina's messed up because of being choked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, and, and that's all the, that's really the main thing of this, this like side plot. Cause you know, cause, cause Kelsey asks him, she's like, what, you know, what do you think about Gina? She's a good actress. And then he's like, Honestly, he's like she is, but like I, she's just really hard to work with. Like I, I think it's like, I don't know what it is. She's like it's like last mm-hmm. time I worked on her, she was great, but like something happened. Like she's just different now. So I wouldn't really recommend her. And it's like so Kelsey doesn't choose her because you know hearing about this because she doesn't want to have to deal with any drama on set again. You right. know, ultimately because of Bojack, yeah, yeah. So it's like. Gina could have gotten that role if it weren't for Bojack. So it's like Bojack, like she's still getting the negative effects of Bojack's actions now, even. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I mean, that's really what this episode is all about is, Hey, these bad things, like, you know, this season up to this point has been Bojack getting better. We were rooting for Bojack. Bojack's done better. He's good now. Everything's good now. But this episode comes in to say, no, those bad things Bojack did are still having negative effects to this day. Mm-hmm. So it's like to kind of show that like, you know, things you do do have consequences, you know, it's, it's negatively affecting Gina's mental state and her career. You know, it's like, ne- you know, it's just, yeah. So it's, it's just a really, interesting point to end the first half on and and really suck you in ready to watch the second half like Mm -hmm. because like it was such it was going so good everything was fine you know episode seven everything ended on a good note for everybody and then this episode is just a shadow looming over it all about to come crashing down yep Yep. And it comes kind of unexpectedly because the episode seven happens and I didn't really expect episode eight to literally not have the main characters at all. You know what I mean? Like I didn't expect it to be just all of this stuff that it was. And then mm-hmm. like, yeah, but it is. Um, it's because it it's be like that sometimes. Yeah. Because again, if you think about it in this entire season up to this point, Bojack hasn't really done anything bad. Yeah. I mean, he accidentally got dr champ drunk but to you know besides that um that was kind of an accident accident. it was an accident and it was you know purpose on purpose right um but we've seen nothing but bojack getting better and doing good things and, and it's it's just kind of like we almost forgot about you almost forget about the bad things because at this point you're like yep bojack's better bojack's better and then it's like they still these bad things still happened Mm mm-hmm Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, so we'll see where that leads uh, next time. Uh, do you have much more to say about these episodes? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, definitely a good start to the season. I think <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it it intrigues you. Um, so yeah, overall thoughts on these first eight episodes. It, I like them. Yeah. They're, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like an illusory wrap-up 
Mm-hmm. And then the eighth episode is just like, <laughs> not so fast. Right, because it's and weird because it hangs there. Because episode seven almost feels like a good ending. Like, oh, everybody's in a good place now. You could end it here, right? But then yeah. it's suddenly eight, episode eight's like, nope, everything's gonna come crashing down. Just wait for it. <laughs> this, this house is built on sticks. And, you know, a wobbly foundation, <laughs> yeah. it's all going to come crashing down. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, definitely very interested to watch the rest of it. Uh, the second half of this season, I think I've only seen one time. So it'll mm-hmm. be fun to watch it again. Um, yeah, when it, yeah, that was when it first came out uh, just over a year ago. Um, yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, so we'll talk about the rest of BoJack. It'll be our final BoJack discussion in two weeks from now, uh, because next week we are going to be talking about a movie that was suggested to us by Low Art, our guest that we had last week, uh, and that movie is House, or Houseu, Houseu, if you say it that way. Yeah, it's a Japanese the horror movie, I guess, um, about a haunted horror house. Horror comedy. Yeah. Horror comedy. <laughs> Do you think it's intentionally funny or is it like... It is most certainly intentionally funny. So I messed up and watched it early. So I know it is most yeah. certainly intentionally funny at some moments and intentionally scary at other moments. And okay. it just does not mix. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely excited to see it. Um, but yeah, so that'll be next week. And then the week after that will be our final BoJack discussion. And um, we're, we're trying to figure out what TV show we want to do next. We have... Uh, in the works some things we were thinking about doing um we haven't we're not 100 percent on this decided on this but we might be discussing um death note which is an anime uh we were talking about it and and uh goodest boy here was like you know why don't why don't why don't we try to watch some anime because mm-hmm. you're into more into anime than i am so yeah and, you, and you've seen it before Yes, I have. So it'll be sort of like a flip because so far we've watched shows where it was like I knew more about the – I mean you had seen Avatar before but like it had been years and years. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to remember a lot of it. Um, But I had seen it recently a lot. And then like, you know, BoJack, I had – You've ne- you'd never even heard of, I don't think. I heard of it. Or maybe I've you seen, did, like, yeah. Memes and – Oh, okay, yeah. So like you had how, heard of it but you didn't yeah. know anything. So it'll be a nice flip where it's a show that you've seen before, but I've never seen before. Mm-hmm. So that'll be exciting if we decide to. I I, th- I think we're pretty set on that, but I don't. We might change our minds by then. We'll 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 have to wait and see because that'll be like you know we still have a little bit because we have next week is house, then the next week after that is the finishing BoJack, then the next week after that will probably be another movie or guest or something. And then the week after that would be uh, another TV show. So, yeah, so that's exciting. Uh, a lot of stuff to look forward to. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening to this week of Waban, um, our official half a year, you know, episode. So, officially made it half a year. So that's exciting. Um, thank you for listening. Um, there are multiple places you can listen to Waban. Uh, if you'd like to, um, you can listen to it on my YouTube channel, which is titled NIM TV. That's N I M TV on YouTube. Um, you can also listen to it on multiple different audio platforms, that being Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. You can listen to it all those places. Um, there's a new episode of the Waban Podcast every saturday at noon eastern standard time so that's when you can expect new episodes so thank you everyone for listening goodbye bye